Life's too short not to celebrate as much as possible. For accomplishments both big and small, celebrate. You earned it. Welcome back to Teacher Tales, where we follow one teacher fighting her way through career burnout to find work-life balance and educational bliss if it still exists. On this episode of Teacher Tales, we learn that the power of recognition knows no bounds. Celebrating even the smallest victories is important to the mental health of each person in our teaching community. But how do we do it? I'm your host, Tony Rambles, and here's another story from your favorite teacher. Tegan Raines, a dedicated high school teacher, found herself immersed in the daily hustle and bustle of teaching, grading, and of course, corralling students. Amidst the whirlwind of responsibilities, she realized the importance of celebrating achievements, both big and small, to foster a positive classroom culture and maintain motivation amongst her students. Tegan noticed that her students often became consumed by the challenges of academics, focusing solely on their grades or the next hurdle to overcome she realized that this tunnel vision inhibited their ability to appreciate their progress and achievements along the way. Determined to change this perspective, Tegan set out to create a culture of celebration in her classroom. Tegan made a conscious effort to acknowledge and celebrate the small victories that her students achieved every day. Whether it was mastering a difficult concept, delivering a compelling presentation, or demonstrating kindness and empathy towards their peers, Tegan ensured that these accomplishments were recognized and celebrated. Tegan encouraged her students to express gratitude and appreciation for others' achievements. She implemented activities such as shout-outs, where students took turns writing sticky notes highlighting their peers' strengths and accomplishments. This practice not only boosted morale, but also fostered a sense of camaraderie and support within the classroom community. Tegan understood that each student had unique strengths and talents, and she personalized her recognition efforts accordingly. Whether it was a handwritten note of appreciation, a shout out during class, or a special reward for outstanding performance, Tegan ensured that every student felt seen, valued, and celebrated for their contributions. Okay, fellow educators, how does your campus recognize people doing good work? Is there a class or school-wide system to recognize the people who are making a difference on campus? To find out where you can share that information, stick around until the end of the episode. Tegan organized culminating celebrations to mark significant milestones and achievements throughout the school year, akin to an award show. These events range from academic achievements like scoring well on exams or AP testing to personal milestones like getting a job, a college acceptance letter, or an internship. Tegan made these celebrations memorable by incorporating games, prizes, and heartfelt speeches to honor her students' accomplishments. Tegan's commitment to celebrating achievements extended beyond the walls of her classroom. She collaborated with other teachers and school staff to recognize students' accomplishments on a broader scale, whether through school-wide assemblies, newsletters, or social media shout-outs. As Tegan prioritized celebrating achievements in her classroom, she witnessed a transformation in her students' attitudes and motivation. They became more confident, resilient, and eager to strive for excellence, knowing that their efforts will be recognized and celebrated. Tegan's commitment to fostering a culture of celebration not only boosted academic performance, but also nurtured a sense of pride, belonging, and joy amongst her students. Fellow educators, yes, we are talking about celebrations today because celebrating is important. 
feel like a lot of times we get too stuck in the rut and just actually doing the work that we don't take time to recognize our accomplishments. I'm not saying you got to get the big head and you got to talk about yourself and puff up, puff up your chest. But I am saying that we do a lot of good work as teachers, as educators, and taking time to celebrate is okay. So number one, the power of recognition. That's the first thing that we learn from Tegan's story as she highlights her students, as she highlights the big and small accomplishments. It's important to recognize their efforts and their successes. Uh, educators can boost morale and motivation and self-esteem in that way. Uh, if we foster those relationships, we can have an impact on how our students feel and their their day-to-day will be affected as we are able to, you know, give them this boost of confidence by saying, hey, you know, great job on getting accepted to that college. Great job on, on finding a job. When they come in and they say, oh, we aced this interview, you can celebrate that. It's always great to say, hey, hey, everybody, let's give little Johnny a hand clap. He just got himself a job. You know, there's no harm in that. And there's so many opportunities where we can recognize people, recognize students, because as they go and as they feel better about themselves, I think that we will see that there are less problems, behavior problems, when kids are feeling confident. Now, you know, there are other things that come with that, you know, but I would prefer that my students feel confident and feel good about themselves uh, through that power of recognition. So recognize your students, you know, talk to them, build those relationships. And when you find that they've done something well, even if it's so small, recognize it. Tell them, wow, you know, great job working on that. You know, let's let's keep building. Let's keep working. Let's see what happens next. Number two, personalized appreciation. Now, it's very easy to go like, good job, you know, well done. But what does that mean is a good question. Like, what did I do well? Or why are you saying good job? It's kind of easy to just throw those comments out there. Even when we mean well, it's important to go, wow, you, you got a job. I know you've been working on that. I know we worked on interviews and resumes. These things are on the top of my mind. That's why I'm kind of talking about them. You can say, well, I know we've been working on that stuff, but for you to go out and put those things into practice, really well done being able to nab that job that you've been seeking. or I know that we have that that test, that AP test was coming up and you did a great job on it. Really, really well done. That sounds weird, but that's what's coming to my mind. Well done on being able to pass that test with a, a four or a five. How did AP testing score? Something like that. Or great job with the work that you did on that test in, you know, AP US history or that test in in algebra. I know that can be difficult. And then that also opens the door for you to share your own thoughts. Because I know when people talk about algebra two in high school, that was a struggle for me. I wouldn't say I had the best teacher. I can still remember this person's name and that we did not get along. But the class was hard. Let me see. Chemistry. Chemistry was hard too. Because it was now math and science. And they were like, moles and stuff. I was like, oh, heck no. Nah. How am I going to figure out chemistry? But but I did. I think I passed with like a 76. But being able to tell students, hey, great job on chemistry. Chemistry can be hard. I know it was hard for me. That is personalized appreciation. Very specific feedback according to that kid. That underscores the significance of acknowledging their unique strengths and, and contributions to their class and their own life, right? We're all active participants in our lives. And even recognition for just showing up. I have some kids that don't come to school all the time. So when they come, I'm like, hey, welcome back. 
anytime somebody's absent, I like to say welcome back just to personalize my appreciation that they are there. So when you tailor your recognition efforts to individual students, it does foster a sense of inclusivity and belonging, reinforcing the ideas that every student achievement is worthy of celebrating. Number three, and finally, community building. Tegan's efforts to celebrate achievements extend beyond just her classroom, like we just talked about in those, those other classes that students have to take, demonstrating the impact of a community-wide recognition. And you know kids talk. So if you're doing the celebrating in your class and they talk about it in another class, sometimes teachers will hear that and go, huh, that's pretty cool. Maybe I could start something like that. I saw that the teacher across the hall from me used to do like these stars on her wall and this kind of like recognition. I was like, huh, okay. How can I figure out a way to do something like that? And so I had this sticker chart this year. It worked okay, but I just feel like I I wasn't committed to it. But I'm still trying to find a way to celebrate my kids and to integrate this community building in in a way that that is meaningful. So involving other teachers, if you can, school staff, the broader community and celebrating student success can help everybody because you find that the more you celebrate other people and the more other people are celebrating you it kind of fosters this community of everybody wants other people to win and so now everybody's getting w's all over the place and the success becomes collaborative so being able to talk about these things on your campus i know we have staff shout outs and student shout outs noble night of the week for both And I really like those. I've nominated people because I just think it's really cool that when when people get their just due, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard and you're feeling like maybe what you're doing is is not working. And that's kind of where the burnout starts to set in. When people start to recognize others, then you foster that community and people become more resilient, more joyful. uh, And there's just growth in, in all areas. So helping people is a way to support the environment of success throughout the community. With that being said, recap. Number one, the power of recognition knows no bounds. I really like that. Recognize people, big or small accomplishment, whatever it is, recognize them. Number two, personalize the appreciation. I see you did a great job on thing X. Wonderful. Well done. Oh, I see you got that job. I know we've been talking about that. Great job on on figuring out a way to get hired. Ah, That can be difficult. I understand. Right. Personalize the appreciation. Tailor it to them specifically. Don't just say, hey, good job. Well done. Lastly, appreciation and recognition builds community. If I'm pulling for you and appreciating you and recognizing you, and you're doing the same for me, and then we are doing the same for teacher X, teacher Y, teacher Z, there's so much celebrating going on that we're all resilient, we're all joyful, and we're all beating burnout together. So that is our episode for today. Of course, I'll have on another educator this Thursday to talk about education and the different things that we go through in detail. For more teacher tips on burnout and time management, join our Facebook group, Teacher Triumphs, Overcoming Burnout and Balancing Life. This is where we share applicable tips and encourage each other on the journey through education. Until next time, keep teaching, keep learning, and I will see you all on the next journey.